Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Ubuntu version 22.04, the long-term support version in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, we're going to need at least four gigs available, 25 gigs of hard disk space available, two CPU cores, the Ubuntu ISO image file, VirtualBox, and the extension pack. And if you don't know how to install that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. And now let's install Ubuntu. So here we are at our Windows 11 desktop. And the first thing that we want to do is download the Ubuntu ISO image file. So I'll go ahead and open up my browser. And we're at the Ubuntu download page. So you can see that the latest version we have right here is 22.04. This is the long-term support version. They have stated that this will be supported at least until April 2027. So you're going to be installing a version of Ubuntu. This is probably the one that you're going to want to do. We'll click on the download link and it'll automatically start downloading the file for us. And here we go. So it's 3.4 gigs in size. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the end of this download. Okay, so the download is now complete. I can go ahead and minimize this window. Okay, and here over here on my desktop, this is where I've downloaded everything into the Ubuntu 22.04 folder, and you can see the ISO image file. So I'll minimize that as well, and go ahead and open up my VirtualBox right now, my VirtualBox manager. And the first thing I wanna do is create a new virtual machine. So we can do that by clicking on the new button up here at the top, and we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna just type in Ubuntu. And for the machine folder, I'm gonna be leaving this as default. For type, if it's Linux, I'll be leaving that the way it is. And the version, it's already selected as Ubuntu 64-bit, which is great, so we'll leave that the way it is, and then click on Next. Now for memory, so you're going to want to have at least four gigs of RAM. If you can provide more memory space, uh, this green area is what you want to stay in. You want to max it out as much as possible. The more you include, the smoother it runs. Let's click on next. For hard disk space, we're going to be leaving it as create a virtual disk now and then click on create. And for the hard disk file type, we'll be leaving that as VDI and then click on next. And for the storage on a physical desk, we'll leave this as dynamically allocated and click on next. So for the file size and location, the location I'm going to be leaving it in the default folder. If you have space issues on your computer, you can change the folder right now. You can locate it to a different drive on your system. The minimum space that you want to have is at least 25 gigs. So I'm just going to put in 30, uh, just have a little bit extra. And then once you have that all entered, you can click on the create button. One of the last steps is just to modify the settings slightly. So we're going to select the virtual machine over here on the left hand side and then click on the settings. And inside the settings under general, we're going to go over to processors. Now it's going to run best with at least two CPUs, but I recommend to max this out as much as possible in the green space for better performance. And then under display, what you can do is under video memory, you can select this and drag it all the way to the end, all the way up to the top, which is 128. And then inside storage, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pointing to our ISO image file that we had just downloaded. And I'll be selecting the empty disk over here. And then you have a little CD icon on the right hand side. We're going to select choose a disk file. Then you just want to navigate to your folder. I have mine on my desktop and here it is. I'm going to go ahead and select that and click on the open button. Once you have your ISO image file selected, you can go ahead and click on OK. And we're done with the setup of our virtual machine. Now what we want to do is go ahead and install it. And by doing that, we want to make sure that we have the virtual machine selected over here on the left hand side, and then we can go ahead and click on the start button. So in the menu that comes up, we're going to be selecting the option to try or install. We're going to be installing it. To try it means you'll be running a live version of the operating system. Uh, we won't be doing that. We'll just hit enter on our keyboard. So now this is where we have the option to either try the live version or install it. We're going to be installing it on the left hand side. I'm going to be selecting English, which is the default option and it's selected. So I'll click on install and I'm going to be leaving the default option selected. So US English over here and here, and then I'll click on continue. And we're going to be doing a normal installation and we'll leave the option to download updates while using Ubuntu. And then we'll click on continue. So the installation type, we're going to be selecting the erase desk and install Ubuntu. Now the disk that we're going to be erasing is your virtual drive. You don't have to worry about your actual drive being erased. It's just going to be formatting it properly. So we can go ahead and have that selected and then click on install now. Then we're just going to be confirming the changes by clicking on continue. And during this installation process, it wants to know some regional information about you. Right now, mine is selected as Toronto. So that's fine with me. I'll go ahead and click on continue. And now we'll be setting up the user profile. So you can go ahead and type in your name here and it automatically inserts a username and then you can go ahead and type in a password. And once you have your password entered in, you can click on the continue button. So it's in the process of installing and copying some files. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, that took a bit of time. The installation is now complete. We're ready to restart it. So we just have to click on the restart now option right here and we'll let it restart. So we've just rebooted. We are at the login screen. We can go ahead and type in the password that we had created during the installation steps. And then hit the enter key on your keyboard and it's gonna log in. 
So the installation wizard might ask you a couple questions as it's installing. You can go ahead and skip this or you can select one of the options. And I'm just gonna click on next here. And privacy for location services, it's off by default. You can turn that on and then click on next. And then they have a bunch of applications that you can go ahead and start installing if you'd like to do that. Or you can just go into the software manager. Once you have that done, you can click on the done button. And here we are, we're at our Ubuntu desktop for Ubuntu 22.04 on a Windows 11 PC. So as you can see, the screen size is fairly small. I'm just gonna go up to the view menu at the top and then go down to full screen mode and then select switch. So as you can see, it's not filling up my screen. I got a lot of space and I wanna maximize the space so I can use it as if I'm running on the desktop. So what we have to do in order for that to happen is install the guest edition CD image. Just gonna go back over here. Okay, so in order for us to get the full screen, what we're gonna to wanna to do is install the guest edition CD image. So we wanna go and open up our terminal. And if you don't see it right away, it's right here, but you can also just type in the name at the top, click on terminal and it's gonna open up. And the first command that we're gonna type in is sudo app update and then hit enter. It's gonna ask for your password. This is the same password that you use to log in. So we'll go ahead and type that in and then hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and update the system. Okay, and then we're gonna be pasting in the next command. And once we have that in, we can go ahead and hit enter and we'll let that install. Okay, once that command is completely done running, we can go ahead and close our terminal window. And then we're gonna go up to the devices menu up at the top, and then you'll see the insert guest edition CD image. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And you'll see the disc over here on the left-hand side. We're just going to double click and open that up. And then you will find a file in here called autorun.sh. If we right click on that, and we say run as a program, it'll launch. So it's gonna ask for your password and I'll be typing in the same password and then I can click on authenticate and it's gonna go ahead and install guest editions on the virtual machine. So the installation is now complete and go ahead and hit enter on your keyboard and it closes out of that. And once again, you can go ahead and close the window that we have open here. And the last thing that we need to do is just restart the system to confirm all these settings. We can go ahead and click on the power off logout option and then select restart. It's gonna go ahead and then we can click on restart again. And now it's gonna reboot the virtual machine. Okay, we're back at the login screen and I'm just gonna type in my password again. And there we go. Okay, and we're logged in. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and go up to the view menu at the top, select the full screen mode, just click on switch. And there we go. We have a full screen up and running and we're running Ubuntu 22.04 in VirtualBox on a Windows 11 PC. We're up and running and that's how you do it. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments below. If you're looking for other guides related to virtual machines, you can check out my dedicated channel, Geekrock Guides. I'll make sure I link that in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.